Good morning, everybody. This is May 25th. It's a Wednesday, uh, approaching Memorial Day weekend. We have a wonderful service planned for this coming Sunday. Uh, boy, didn't the kids and the youth do a great job, and uh, some of the youth leaders did a great job last Sunday. Friends, it's a, it's, it's a good church, and you're a good people, and uh, I pray that we be witnesses for our Lord and our Jesus. We look forward to preaching this Sunday. And uh, a couple of things about this Sunday. Not only is it Memorial Day, but it's also Ascension Sunday. Um, seven Sundays after Easter, and then we have Pentecost. So we'll be talking and preparing for Pentecost on June 5th. Uh, but this week we're going to talk about Memorial Sunday, and we're going to talk about Ascension Sunday. A couple of prayer requests before we get into today's lesson. Paul Kraft is in intensive care. He's improving, but we do want to be with him. Throughout COVID, he's been remarkably alone, uh, often under quarantine in, in the care facility. And uh, we want to pray for Paul. And we want to pray for Paul's family. And then also we want to be praying for Jane Royce. We want to be praying for and with um, Linda Crispin. I believe she's back home now from Pittsburgh after serious surgery down there. Jane uh, recovering from some things, and I think we'll be getting back home later this week. Uh, one of our regular participants in this devotional and our sermons is Elaine Cook from Westbury down in Meadville. And uh, her son I went to school with, uh, or not school with, but uh, we were in youth group together. Uh, he's had some health concerns, serious health concerns, then pneumonia on top of that. So we want to be praying for Tim Cook as well. I think those are some of the biggest concerns. Of course, how can we not be affected by the shooting in Texas? An 18-year-old going into an elementary school after having shot his grandma. Friends, when I look at the Bible throughout the Old Testament in particular, you see communities coming under condemnation and judgment. Not often due to individual sin, and I don't want to diminish and release any of us from the responsibility for our individual sin. But when a society or a culture becomes so enmeshed in corrupted values, perverted values and perverted ways of thinking, the culture becomes bad. And God has always moved against cultures and societies that have allowed themselves to be consumed and overtaken by the forces of evil. And when I see the abuse and the rampant shootings in our society, I can't help but feel challenged. Not only am I moved to tears and sorrow as I think of the families affected, I think about what culture and what society would give such permission that such behavior is, is replicated time and time and time again. There are cultures in our world that do not have, do not have this amount of corruption and perversion in our society. And it is certainly time for God's people to humble themselves and to pray. What can we do as a church? What can we do as a people? We pray for healing. We pray for restoration. We pray for redemption. We pray for a new heaven and a new earth. But we've got to be part of it, not part of the problem, but part of the solution. And that's exactly what our devotional will be about today. And I look forward to sharing that with you in just a minute. Dear God, be with our time of devotion, of reflection. And God, be with our society. May we as Christians flavor society more towards God flavors and less towards flavors of evil and self-consumption. Not selfishness, but other-centeredness focused and committed to helping others be the people God wants them to be. We must first be strong ourselves that we might help others with the Spirit of God in us and through us. And all these things we pray in the next few minutes. In Jesus' name, amen. 
we are working our way towards Pentecost. Seven weeks after Easter is Pentecost. And we'll be talking more about that next week on Devotions. But this week, we celebrate and recognize on the church calendar the Ascension of our Lord. When I think of our Ascension of our Lord, we know that God loves us. We know that God has commissioned us. We know that God has said to us, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. That is the greatest commandment. But knowing that commandment, what will we now do? We read at the end of Matthew 28, the last few verses in the Gospel of Matthew, a passage that's often been called the Great Commission. So we've received the great commandment. Now what's the great commission? Matthew 28, uh, Jesus tells his disciples before his ascension, go into all the world and make disciples. Not disciples of mine or disciples of yours or disciples of the Methodist church or disciples of any particular church, but disciples of Jesus. We are to be challenged by that. Friends, do you live, do we live, do we help others to live, not as we will ourselves to live, but as Jesus would will ourselves to live? Do you live in the form and the manner of Jesus? As people were drawn to Jesus, are people drawn to you? There's a story about a group of musicians who went to Russia, Moscow. And they were there for Orthodox Easter, and they celebrated in the, in the Russian Orthodox Church Easter. They then went into the main square. They handed out 100,000 pamphlets sharing the love of Christ. They were warned to be careful, to be limited, to not be over the top. Not because they would be persecuted or punished but because the hunger is so great for Jesus that they could easily be overwhelmed with people seeking the answer, the source, the light, the way, the truth that only Jesus can give. Friends, it's been an interesting years of COVID, but I see the churches that promote and evangelize, the churches that exalt the name of Jesus have grown through these difficult times. And I believe South Harbor Creek Church is growing in these difficult times. I look forward to the ministry of Tim and Nancy Hoover. We pray for them and we help them as they prepare to become your pastors the 1st of July. Linda and I are wrapping things up. We'll be cleaning out our office. We'll be uh, making our final messages and appeals and, and sharing with you those last things that God has put on our heart. But mostly we're reflecting and remembering all the fond memories, all the love, all the relationships that we've shared together. That's exactly what the disciples were doing with Jesus. Six weeks, seven weeks after Easter, the disciples were with Jesus. We read about this in Acts chapter 1. Let me read to you portions of Acts chapter 1. Acts 1, uh, verses 6. 11, five verses. Then they gathered around Jesus and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of God? Are you going to restore the kingdom of God? Jesus goes on, and, and I'll point it out to you in a minute, but Jesus says, I'm not going to restore the kingdom of God yet, but you will. You will. It's your call. It's your commission. As Matthew records, go into all the world and preach the gospel, making disciples of all nations. Jesus, in this account, this account of Acts written by Luke, records that Jesus said to them, it is not for you to know the time or the date that the ultimate healing of this country will come, that the ultimate coming of of God's will and God's place and God's paradise with God's people and God's presence will be made real. That day, you don't know, but it's coming. But you will receive power 
You see, Jesus was telling him it's not going to be he that restores, but rather that when power comes, we as the believers and the children of God will be called and expected. Called and expected to promote and to extend the kingdom of God through our lives and through the churches and through the communities and the people that we keep. To not only do God's work, but to do God's work in God's way, in God's time. Too often in this society, and you can think of cases upon cases, almost every day in the news, we see God's work being done not in God's way. Not drawing people to God, but drawing people away from God. We've got to do God's work in God's way in God's time with the Holy Spirit indwelling within us. Jesus says to the disciples, you will be my witnesses. W-I-T, witness. Wit means to know. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus' ways? Does Jesus reside in you and his spirit? Are you a witness to Jesus? Or do you have some ideological commitment? I want you to know Jesus in your heart, in your spirit, in your body, in your mind, in your soul. For the greatest command is to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, and all of your soul. And I want to encourage that because I think it's our call then to be salt and light. It's our call to bring the flavors of God into the world and to help draw out the flavors of God in one another. We need to be praying for the societal sin and the cultural sin that is, is very nearly pulling this society and this culture beneath the surface. But we need to lift up our hands. We need to say, keep our eyes upon Jesus. Lift us up. For in Jesus' name, our land will be healed. In the Old Testament Chronicles, if my people will humble themselves and pray, I will hear their prayers, I will forgive their sins, and I will bless them and enable them to do what I meant them to do, to bring flavor, to cultivate, to, to, to expand the kingdom of God. But we must do that. And Ascension Sunday is a commissioning. Jesus says, wait for one week or ten days, seven days, and you will receive the power of Pentecost. But right now, I'm going to return to my Father. And I want you to spend these seven days in preparation for Pentecost by praying, by confessing, and by preparing yourselves to be the witnesses that God wants us to be. Go, Jesus says. Pray with one another, strengthen one another, help one another. So as we look forward to the second coming of Jesus, we want to be preparing and helping. Shaw Harbor Creek Church has worked hard in faithfulness to serve and to minister as Jesus would lead. Now Pastor Tim and Nancy are coming to, to help carry and lead you forward as a church. And we pray for the blessing of that ministry. We pray for the blessing that time. I pray for the blessing of you as you spread the joy and the goodness of God. But this Sunday, I want you to reflect on what it might have been like to be the disciples and to have Jesus come to you and say, you will receive power and you will be my witnesses. You will be my validation. You will be my affirmation. You will be the word that helps others to believe. And I want you to do this first in all of Judea, Jerusalem, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, which the disciples did. I do not want you to hesitate to share the name of Jesus, to say, we are different because of that. If someone compliments you or smiles at you, say thank you. I'm trying to be like Jesus. I pray that in a way that is positive, not negative. Friends, I pray that God will lift you up. We believe not because of an empty tomb, but because we know he lives in our hearts. We know that we're strengthened and, and given hope. And God, I pray for the people.
people of South Harbor Creek Church to be like salt and light, that we might be a light on the hill, drawing people into the joy and the privilege of living according to God's ways in God's time, doing God's work. God's work, God's time, and God's ways. I pray that you have a wonderful week. I look forward to leading the service on Sunday with Memorial Day. We'll be remembering our veterans, but we'll be remembering those who gave their lives for us. But we'll also be looking at and considering that God loves us. And because of that, body, mind, and soul, we are to be bringing the joy and the good news and the hope and the promise and the presence of Jesus are you an ambassador for Jesus? I challenge you today as Jesus challenged his disciples. Go, prepare yourselves and pray because in a week's time, power will come upon you and you will be released to begin to usher in the kingdom of God. They said, Jesus, are you going to bring in the kingdom of God? He says, no, not yet, but you are. So prepare yourselves. And on this Ascension Sunday, when Jesus goes to return and sit on the right hand of God the Father Almighty as part of the Holy Trinity and the Holy Divinity, as he waits for his ideal time of coming and making all things right, we are to be the forces and the strength and the promise and the hope and the joy and the peace of Jesus love and joy and peace and patience and kindness, the fruit of the Spirit. God bless you and God keep you. I'm praying for those things you're praying for. I'm praying that God will honor your prayers and that he will draw you close to him, that you would feel the warmth of God's face upon your face and that you'll be lifted up with wings like eagles. And all these things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.